What's up, y'all? I'm Sala Mike, and if you want to be a power lifter, if you want to start power lifting, beginning power lifting, this is a video for you. I've been coaching and competing in power lifting since 2011 or 2010. And we got my girl, Abby. She's going to give some input. She's a pro power lifter, pulls over 400 pounds at 123 pound weight class. We're going to give you some advice to get started in power lifting. 3SB.co if you want the apparel. Let's dig in. Let us know, how do you start? So I, I've probably been guilty of it in terms of sneakers or clothes or like that musical artist I don't tell nobody about and then when it hits the radio, I stop listening to them. But gatekeeping for the barbell ain't cool. I don't, want, I don't really care what you consider a power lifter, whether you compete or you need a certain total or you have to do it for a certain amount of years. For me, to keep things simple, I think you're a power lifter if you goal is to train for strength and then you test your strength. You could be in a sanctioned meet, non-sanctioned meet, I don't care. I do think there's beauty in powerlifting because these three lifts are compromised or composed, excuse me, to allow you to lift the most amount of weight. Now there's people that will clean and jerk more than I squat because that guy's stronger than me, but in terms of how much total load a human can move, these three lifts are the combination of that. And that's why powerlifting is cool. It's the squat, bench, and the deadlift. And there's certain standards of those lifts that must be accomplished to compete in powerlifting to uh, keep a standard of what that lift means from start to completion. How do you get started? You start training with the barbell, number one. Dude, if you want to power lift, just freaking power lift. As in like get stronger in squat bench and deadlift, that's it. Um, I didn't even know what power lifting was when I learned that I wanted to get stronger in these lifts. I just started squatting, benching, and deadlifting because I went to the gym with my friend. Um, and he did these things, so I just did them. And I was like, oh, this is fun. Like, oh, I want to see how much I can put on the bar. And from there, it was just like, that's it. And then you get into a community that's just like, oh, we also want to get stronger in these lifts too. I feel like people want to label themselves um, or they're afraid to be like, oh, I'm not going to group myself in with this community because like they're intimidating or they have this, I don't want people to judge me based off of it, of if I say I'm a powerlifter or not. Um, because I don't either go to a powerlifting gym or I don't wear the powerlifting gear or whatever. But it's like, if you just want to get stronger um, and build your strength, especially in these three compound lifts, then like that's kind of what a powerlifter is. We don't, it doesn't have to be uh, a certain image or a certain like personality or whatever. It's like we all want to get stronger and everyone's really supportive in the community. Um, they'll teach you, they'll guide you, people will like show you how to use certain bars or like how to use wrist straps um, properly, how to how to wear a belt, what belts to get, um, knee sleeves if you want, but you don't have to. Like you could be whatever type of powerlifter you want. It's kind of like as long as you want to get strong, then I guess you're a powerlifter. Yeah, so tip, tip number two, and I think it's like anything in life, is like you can learn by doing research and diving head into something, but you have to start. Step one is move a barbell. You can obviously learn by watching YouTube and podcasts and how-tos and tutorials and Instagram. There's a lot of great information out there. But to accelerate all that, if you want to skip a bunch of steps, you can grab a coach, grab a program, grab a mentor, and you will go leaps and bounds faster. There's someone who first had to trudge the way and trailblaze and break all this grass down so other people can follow that path much faster. I'm up here chopping weeds for the last 12 years so y'all can just cruise on through on your skateboard, right? So find a coach, find a good YouTube channel, soak up the info, but number one, whether you have a coach or not, you have to move a barbell to get better, to get stronger. So another easy thing to do is kind of along the similar lines of finding a mentor and stuff, you're gonna accelerate faster being around like-minded humans. So if you find yourself a powerlifting gym, find your strength training gym, go to powerlifting meets as a spectator, make some friends, dude. The coolest thing about this sport, I personally don't compete anymore. I never got like a lot of fulfillment from competing. I get fulfill fulfillment from the culture, from the people, from coaching for providing for the sport in other ways with you know business, sponsorships, apparels, we run our own meets. But most importantly in the culture, 
is how welcoming everyone is and how everyone's from every place you can imagine. Different uh, financial backgrounds, different religious backgrounds, different ethnicities, different, it doesn't matter what you do, who you are, what your core is, you move a barbell, we do it together, we all know the struggle of lifting something really heavy. We all know the struggle of missing reps. We all know the day-to-day -day struggle of doing the monotonous repetition upon repetition, three by sixes for 10 years. You know the pain, you know the grind, and that's what allows us to be friends. Nothing else matters, it's just hard work and showing up. If you show up, you're coachable, you wanna learn, and you work hard, you're part of the powerlifting community, and that's the beauty in it. So, go spectate and meet, go ask some questions, go make some friends. And that's probably the most valuable tip I can give you. I don't think you ever have to get a coach hypothetically, but again, if you want to make progress as efficiently as possible, probably getting a coach from day one. Obviously, it depends on budget and commitment, and I get it. Any sport or hobby that starts to take over your life becomes a financial uh, issue or responsibility, right? You want to buy a belt, the quality belt's a couple hundred bucks, quality knee sleeves, the last few years, but they're all tools in this sport. And so first I suggest, again, just getting under a barbell. Do that for a couple months, see if you like it. See if you can get yourself in a habit of growing mentally and physically by grinding out the gym. Three, five sessions a week, consistently. If you enjoy the progress of strength, which I, again, the other beautiful thing about powerlifting is that um, the, the results and the progress are tangible. It'll take you six months of measuring your arm every single day to feel like you're making progress by growing an eighth of an inch. Powerlifting, you can hit PRs in different variations, in different rep schemes, in different volume schemes, uh, efficiency, speed, let alone your one rep max, week to week. Even as an advanced lifter, I could find ways to progress uh, on variations, et cetera, et cetera. So um, find out if you like it. Obviously, it's a financial commitment, so if you have it in you, that's great. If you don't, again, it's not necessary. There's a lot of free information and podcasts, YouTube we've done for 10 years now. You can find your ways around it. One of the biggest things that is like a pet peeve to mine is people asking me questions like, hey, I squat 400 and I'm 400 pounds body weight and I'm 400 years old. Is that good? Um, no one cares, it doesn't matter, there's no such thing as good. Who are you comparing yourself to? No one cares. At a meet, no one cares online. The point is to get better, and if you're squatting 400 now, hopefully in six months or 12 months, you're squatting 420, 425, 435. That's all that matters, is that we're working hard, we're showing up, and we're making progress. When someone's starting out, what should they look for in a coach? That is really difficult. That is so difficult to say. Because people who don't understand the concept of training, and I've coached these people before when, as, when I was like beginning to coach people. I coached people that I met at um, the gym who didn't have any structure to their workouts. They trained consistently and they wanted to get stronger. That was their goal. And they wanted to do uh, get stronger in these compound lifts. Um, but I see them day to day and it's like they don't have a structured workout um, or like a structured plan for the month, you know? So then, I was starting off, I coached some people for free, and um, I just wanted them to understand like what building up your strength looks like within a four week period, and to understand the concept of like doing the same sets and reps you know, per week for each lift, um, but then increasing your RPE. You know, something as simple as that, and then having a structure, and, and understanding like how beneficial it is to track your progress as you go, um, to see the as, like how the weight is moving and to see changes made um, throughout the month versus like without any of that they were just kind of walking in circles they didn't understand like how to whether they were progressing or not I feel like we're just walking in circles without a program nowadays so I just wanted to give them that kind of structure um, and tracking like their progress so with that I was a coach who just kind of taught them the concept of how to structure your workouts in the long run and make progress that way. Um, but I wasn't necessarily like, at that point, I couldn't, I couldn't coach someone who was a national power lifter, you know, at that level. So it's like, I think at different levels um, in your training, you can find a coach accordingly. And if you outgrow that coach um, and you're not, no longer a beginner, find a more advanced coach to help you get to that level. But obviously, as a beginner, you can also find an advanced coach too. And there's just so many different things involved. Um, trying out different coaches and seeing like what, how like their style of training fits yours, and also getting along with them, being able to communicate with them the, same, the, the way that you want to, the way that you feel comfortable is also important. Um, whether the coach listens to you and takes your 
feedback or they just like talk to you and give you a program and then never see you for a few for like a few weeks. Like it's also based on how you train as a person and as your own athlete. So um, there's just a lot to consider. Definitely ask around and then um, just start 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 somewhere and um, just know like you should be able to communicate comfortably with your coach. You should be able to recover well from your lifts and uh, make progress and ask questions. And your coach should be able to like be there to help you and guide you through all of that. So again, like number one suggestion to find a coach to accelerate your progress, but like how do you find a coach or how do you qualify a coach? And that's a really hard thing to figure out. It's just like anything else. Like people can go through education, they can have experience, they can have a talent, but there's good doctors, there's bad doctors. There's good mechanics, there's bad mechanics. There's really great coaches and there's really bad coaches. I can try to help you guys and refer you to some. I have my own programs that are cheap, kaizentraining.com. Um, there's guys like Game Day Barbell who does a bunch of one-on-one -on -one coaching that I recommend. There's uh, uh, Team 3DMJ who are some of the smartest guys to ever come in the industry that I think are really great if you guys are looking for one-on-one -on -one coaching. Um, Mike Tashir and his company does a really good job. Calgary Barbell, the list goes on forever. What I recommend is doing a lot of research and then asking them questions like you would any other time. If you slightly interview your coach on how they communicate, what they give you, you know, the different uh, price points, the different um, packages they sell as coaches, and then also try to communicate them with yourself to see if you guys even vibe. Because um, if you take this seriously and if you want to learn, obviously how you communicate with your teacher or your coach uh, goes a very long way. If you don't understand how they communicate, they use words you don't like or they don't, uh, respond promptly, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, it's going to hinder your progress and you want to get the most for your money. I understand it. Obviously from a businessman, I want to give you the most value I can and still charge what I believe is fair. Uh, but as a consumer, you want to pay what you think the value is and you want to receive that value in return. So it is a difficult uh, thing to do. Sometimes it takes time. Uh, but again, the biggest teacher is going to be reps and showing up reps and showing up. I appreciate you guys. Hopefully that helps a little bit. If you ask your comments below, ask your questions about powerlifting, about beginning powerlifting, we can start to teach you guys a little bit more as we go. This channel has tons of resources. If it's something you're into, search around. I've been putting out uh, how-tos and little tidbits for years, um, but we'll start to get some more stuff. Personally, I'm not competing anymore. Now I'm just trying to get jacked. We're on a little bit of a diet break, and I think we're going to start a little bit of a shred series in a while after a couple of weeks, maybe months of allowing my brain to relax and not track my food. So stay tuned for that. More gym vlogs, new videos twice a week. I appreciate you guys. 50% Facts podcast. If you want to check that out, I drop two podcasts a week around fitness and the culture. Um, thanks, guys, so much. Catch you in the next one.